Right, so hello everybody. My name is Tanya Bakic. I'm from Montenegro. I would like to say that I'm very much happy and grateful for being given this kind of opportunity to present my paper at this lovely Global Blade conference. My paper is entitled Example from a Serbian blog from a poison tree to a poison fruit. A short post featuring only a translation of Lake's poem A Poison Tree with the title given in the Serbian translation as A Poison Fruit was showcased in October 2014 on a blog on the Serbian information portal B92. The post was very popular and talked about online and also because the translated title moved away from Blake's original title. The translator so we can see more posts. The translator is Nebusha Krstic, a regular contributor to the blog. His followers themselves also contribute text to the same blog. So those followers create their own their online product, also reacting to other people's posts, thus belonging to the subcult subculture of blog fandom. As Henry Jenkins explains, fandom is a subculture existing somewhere between mass society and everyday life, creating its own identity from things taken from texts which already circulate. So they create texts or products, inspiration for which they find in those texts already circulating in the same way that Jovan Krstic found inspiration for his post for in Blake's poem A Posen Tree. So the blog B92 also contains the minimum five dimensions of fandom culture referred to by Jenkins in 2005, and those are its relationship to a particular mode of reception since they are directly related to the reception of their own posts and other contributors posts its role in encouraging viewers activism they influence blog activism either as producers of their own content or as followers of other persons posts its function as an interpretive community, they interpret content, interact and thus form a community. Its particular traditions of cultural production, they create cultural products and its status as an alternative social community. They are a social community, but marginalized unofficial alternative. To further add to the blog subculture as something unofficial, existing somewhere between mass society and everyday life, as Henry Jenkins would put in 2005, we must mention that Kirstic's translation on the blog does not belong to official Serbian culture, since unlike his translation predecessors, it has not been published in any serious Serbian print publication. Now we will analyze the Serbian receptor language translation of Krstic. Parts that imply different meaning than the original in the Serbian receptor language culture are highlighted in blue. So Krstic's translation has kept the musicality of the original. The original ABAB -A -B rhyming scheme has been followed, except in lines three and four in the first stanza, where an irregular rhyme has been created instead, neprijatelja and kulja. The meaning remains true to the original, except in stanzas three and five, where huge changes in meaning have been introduced, both, both due to the adjustment in the rhyme and to a different interpretation by the translator, namely the original second line of the third stanza, till it bore a nepal bright, has been translated as Doknije postao sličan voću, till it started look like a fruit, also the fourth line of the third stanza, and he knew that it was mine, 
has been rendered as Iskvati Damoe Krai, and he realized his end was near. So, that kind of different interpretation from the source message by the Serbian receptor culture translator can be explained through textual studies and Macgan's notion that this interpretation itself stands for an act which gets carried out only as a response to a given textual condition, Macgan 1991. When McGann says textual condition, he's first of all referring to a text which, while he is writing it, he's also sim simultaneously reading it in another time and place, believing that a text varies not only over time, but also in regard to itself, starting from the moment when a reader begins reading it thus implying its potential meaning. In this case, Blake's text, originally, originally written in 1794, has varied through time and in regard to itself in another time and place like Serbian culture, contemporary age, online blog, and has implied meaning different than its original. So, it was Mike Good who noted similar issues, more denoting how texts behave than what they mean, i.e. how texts inhabit forms and media, or a blog in this case, manifesting their capabilities in different times, places and situations. This case also implies the hidden hypermedial messages of Blake's original message that want recipients, i.e. How the Blake text inhabits blog media, how it uses, refers to, and perhaps comments on its own mediation, these uses, references, and commentaries, hypermedial messages that want recipients need not have been built into a text by authorial design, also an audience ready to receive many or any of the messages need not exist when the text is produced and may well never come into being. When the text assumes new media life as it encounters new historical contingencies and enters new media environments, the active media forms and practices to which the text proves a special suited sometimes are evidence that some kind of hypermedial message is being received good 2020. So both Kristic, who translated Blake's original poem, and his black followers, who commented on his post, received Blake's hypermedial message, namely blogger Vladimir Petrovich. Wondered why the title was rendered as a poison fruit and not as a poison tree. Here, the blogger refers to both the French and Italian translations of the poem, wherein Blake's tree has kept the original meaning. So, other bloggers also commented upon Kustich's translation of the title. Blogger Freehand believes that in this case a more suitable title is Otro Drva. It's like in English translation, it sounds like the tree of poison with the hyphens in the title. But while participating in this conversation, Anebuca Karstic explained his choice. The tree which William has in mind is an apple tree, apple is a fruit. So Kirstich furthermore explained that he had decided to translate the poem because he liked it so much and that he wouldn't have wanted the construction a poison tree in his translation since he finds it cold and empty. Hence he opted for watch or fruit, since itself ima sadržaj iz boksnežene valjda asocira na jabuku, is full and I guess because of snow white it is associated with the apple. In his further conversation with bloggers, 
Kostich pointed out that during the translation process, the fact that he knows his own mother tongue was very, very important. So the fact that a Serbian language receptor culture translator and his own line followers received Blake's hypermedial messages correlates well with Eves's observation about Blake's poems representing not only printing text but media events. Blake wrote romantic poetry, which itself may be close to our more than I understand of multimedia, called by Langan and McLean in 2008. And regardless of whether the poetry is transmitted via voice, performance, a printed text or a transcription, it mediates itself, examining the ways under which human imagination materializes itself, quoted by Langan and McLean 2008, or even serving for communication at a greater temporal or spatial distance, quoted by Eve in 1977, in this case, contemporary Serbian online culture. As a Blake text reader, Kerstich confirmed that his approach was textual, corresponding to McGann's definition of textuality as a scene in which readers respond to the text they encounter, as well as to the notion that texts are more scenes of reading, i.e. interpreting and less of writing, McGann 1991. It is Francis R. Jones who points to similar observation 2011, claiming that the skills of the poetry translator are textual, since he needs to analyse the original semantics, imagery and other practical features of the style. So, in the case of Kristich's translation, Jones 2011 notions that rewriting poems is far from simple can also be applied since the translation should have an appropriate relation of relevant similarity, Chesterman cited in Jones 2011 with a target language, but he has given a um, different view on the source text and its meaning since he has managed to receive Blake's hypermedial message. One of the most expressed aspects of the subculture fans of the B92 blog is consumer activism. The creators of its content are also observers of the content of others, who through the comments section talk to the content's creators, expressing their thoughts and participating in reciprocal exchange of social worth within an ongoing relationship between producer and fans in that aspect. Further communication between the online followers and bloggers and the author Kostich point toward the fact that the blogger Anonymni Poedinets succeeded in exerting great influence upon the translator when it came to changing the title from Vodka Fruit to um, Vodka Little Fruit. Since the latter is a word for a time, and at the time, it is a symbol Sounds more like the tree simultaneously keeping the symbolism maintained in the word fruit. And just because of that comment, the translator Kerstich acted affirmatively by changing the title from Voce fruit into Vochka little fruit or fruitlet, but it sounds a bit of awkward in English. I mean the word fruitlet. So, indeed, rewriting a poem in a language different than the original is not simple at all, but producing literal translations, as Kostich did in this case, is one of the ways of producing literal meanings, because every part of the productive process is mainly constitutive. The words that lie immediately before a reader on some page provide one with a merest glimpse of what complex world we call it our work and the meanings it produces. We all start from some localized place of reading, but no one who reads seriously will ever end up there. Or if you do return, you will see that place very differently. Perhaps begin to see truly only done for the first time, according by Megan 1991. So with his translation of Blake's A Poison Tree, 
on the blog, Kirstich did produce new literal meaning or created poetry translation as product, thus also benefiting the Serbian language receptor culture. Regardless of the fact that his literary product itself was created in a space belonging to unofficial Serbian culture. But on the flip side, what surprises us is that although there are older translations of Blake's A Person Tree in Serbian culture, made by writers and intellectuals before Krstić's translation, the one made by Krstić, although the work of a medical doctor has proved to be among the most successful. That's all. Thank you.